I can boil most of what I've learned in aviation down to a few key points, and the first is safety. To stay safe, we first have to avoid the big ticket items, the top ways that pilots get hurt. Things like loss of control under a thousand feet above the ground, controlled flight into terrain, flight into unintended IFR conditions, or avoiding power plant issues, i.e. the engine, by taking excellent care of your airplane, things like this. And if we can be vigilant about these items, this really helps mitigate the main causes of aviation fatalities. Now, I'm super careful in all of these areas, but risk remains. I've still scared myself in the airplane and in those situations I've really noticed that safety slips in small stages I'll say that again safety slips in small stages for example I did a video a while back talking about a scare I had in the mountains of Idaho and it was an awesome daytime weather it was perfectly fine day to fly and it was a perfectly safe place to fly but I made a series of really small decisions that on their own honestly wouldn't have been an issue but put together left me in a hazardous spot that honestly just really freaked me out like starting an approach the mountains way too high, coming in a little too fast, making a short approach to wrongly avoid some traffic, etc, etc. Small bad decisions tend to compound and get a lot worse. So even though I'm a really safe pilot, we still have to be so vigilant in safety. Safety can never just be a given. It can't be an assumption. It's something we really have to fight for. We have to actively fight to prioritize conservative decision making in every single flight. Like the safety we had on the last flight doesn't carry over into the next one. Just because that flight was safe doesn't mean that the next one's automatically going to be safe as a result. Like each new flight is one that you have to start over from zero when it comes to safety. Because when you lose vigilance towards safety, risk takes its place. The second area is training. Really the biggest thing here is that there's always a lot of content and volume to know in aviation. The amount of things you have to know really really never shrinks, but none of it is actually rocket science. So over time, it really does get easier. So anytime I'm having to learn or particularly relearn something, I have to encourage myself to remember that this is solvable if I just put some effort into studying it. Sometimes just telling yourself, I can learn this makes all the difference. Second within training, I've really learned over time that most things are just the same things over and over and over. Like, let me give you a non-aviation example. When you and I both learned to walk, walking was really difficult, even though it was just putting one leg in front of the other, in front of the other, in front of the other. Pretty repetitive, right? But at the time, it felt like rocket science, and now we don't even think about it. And honestly, aviation isn't too different. Things like procedures, communications, approaches, maneuvers, etc. it is all the same stuff. And so as you build up your library of knowledge and then supplement that with practical application over the course of time, it really, really does get easier. Now, I'm nowhere near perfect here. I'm learning, and especially relearning, stuff all of the time. And that leads us into the next point, and that is that everyone is a student. You're a student, I'm a student, we're all students, regardless of how many licenses, ratings, and endorsements you have. And I think the tendency here is, is to lean towards insecurity, to think that, gosh, I'm probably the only guy in the room that doesn't understand what that person is saying, or, I, gosh, everyone else, everyone, basically everyone else is a genius except me. And, and just, frankly, that that's not the case. So I'll be the one to raise my hand and say, like, I, I have to learn stuff all of the time. So we're all students. And one more point in regards to training, if it's not on the calendar, it just won't happen. So always try to put your, your training flights, your studying, your check rides, your flying once you're licensed, any of those things, get it on the calendar. If it's not on the calendar, it won't happen. And unfortunately, I've really learned that the hard way. Next, ATC or air traffic control has been a big learning area for me. Now, while ATC is usually a stumbling block for almost every pilot, and it certainly was for me, really it just comes down to two things, and that is knowing what to expect and communicating clearly. I've got a lot of videos on this channel talking about practical things I've learned operating for years in busy ATC areas here in Dallas, but really all of them have the common denominator of those two things, knowing what to expect and communicating clearly. Next is having a flying community. And if you don't have a flying community, it doesn't have to be hard to start to create one. And you don't even have to know them that well. And in a minute, I'll explain why. But if you don't know a lot of other pilots, there's many ways to do it. You can join uh, local flying clubs. You can join the AOPA and attend fly-ins. You can join an EAA chapter. They're all over the country. You can keep in touch with your instructors and ask them, hey, is there anyone else in this area uh, that, that would be willing to kind of get together from time to time to talk about flying? You could post that on Reddit and say, hey, I live in this 
this city. We're going to get together at this coffee shop or this airport and try to get to know each other and help each other out. I promise you can find people if you just spend a little bit of effort looking for it. And then with your flying community, I really like to be in different group texts with kind of the different groups that I'm a part of. And I really try to plan like one small trip together, you know, every year. And some of the best aviation lessons seem to come at the dinner table on a trip with other pilots. When you're talking about the flying of that day, you're talking about what the plan is for tomorrow. And, and like I said earlier, you don't even have to know them that well here because the topic of the weekend will all be flying. That's probably all you'll talk about. And so you'll have plenty to talk about, even if you're just kind of getting to know them. And speaking of flying the airplane, the biggest, best, and most important lesson I've ever learned about flying an aircraft comes down to energy management. You can learn to confidently fly literally any airplane if you just learn how to manage its energy. And the best place to learn energy management is in landing. And so in the video on the screen, I'm gonna explain to you how it was taught to me, how energy management can radically transform your landings and, and just build so much confidence in any airplane that you're flying. So I'll see you over in that video.